Okay, last week on Friday we began looking at the process for sketching the graph to the reciprocal of a quadratic function. So today what we're going to do is run through this particular example um, to make that process more clear so that you're able to sketch these graphs yourselves. So let's start with trying to sketch the graph of y equals 1 over 2x squared minus 7x minus 4. Now one of the best ways to begin this process is by looking at the graph of the parabola 2x squared minus 7x minus 4. The reason why we want to begin by sketching this graph is much like what occurred for us when we were sketching the graphs of a line and its reciprocal. The properties of the reciprocal function are based on those of its reciprocal. So if we know a lot about this parabola, 2x squared minus 7x minus 4, that's going to help us sketch the graph of the reciprocal given in the example. So let's take note of a few things that we know and can figure out with regards to this quadratic. Okay, so our first point is that the graph of y equals 2x squared minus 7x minus 4 opens upwards. since the a value, that is its lead coefficient a, is greater than zero. And you can see that a is equal to two, so the graph opens upwards. We also know that quadratic functions have at most two zeros. And if we factored this thing, we would likely be able to discover those zeros. So let's go ahead and begin the process of factoring. Now we know that factors produce zeros. So I'm going to set y to zero and I'm going to attempt to factor the right hand side. So the quadratic term 2x squared would come as a result of expanding or multiplying 2x and x. The constant 4 can be arrived at 2 by 2 or 4 by 1. So as it turns out, if we use 1 and 4, and we make our 4 a minus, you can see that one of the products or inner products will be negative 8x. If I add 1x to that, I'm going to end up with the middle x term, negative 7x. So moving forward, we can see that zero can be produced by this factor or zero can be produced by the other factor. And therefore, negative one half equals x or positive four equals x. So there are our zeros. Okay, so therefore the zeros to our quadratic function are 
minus 1 half, and positive 4. Now the only other thing that would be helpful is the vertex, the coordinates of the vertex. If we had those, then we'd be able to graph the function that was given in standard form. Okay, so as follows, we would average the zeros we have. So we end up with 3.5 over 2, which gives us 1.75, or 1 and 3 quarters. Now for the determination of y, if we substitute that value into the factored form, or even into the standard form, we would come up with the answer we're looking for. So either form will do. In using the standard form and a calculator, we can come up with the y-coordinate of the vertex. And that value turns out to be minus 10 decimal 1 Two, five. So therefore, the vertex has coordinates and written as an ordered pair 1.75 and 10.125. So let's get to the graphing of this and we'll end this video. This will be part one of a two or three part series. So let's go to our graph and let's plot some of this information. So let's identify the zeros of the function. So the zeros occurred at minus one half. Now, according to the size of my grid here, this might be a little tricky in terms of graphing. So let's see if I can scale the x-axis in terms of halves. So if for every two squares I plot one, then I don't think that we'll feel as though it's too difficult to read the graph. Okay, so I'll just make a note that the x-axis increments will be 0.5. Okay, and I believe the y, the y-axis will increment by 1. So we'll make a note of that as well. Okay. So getting our zeros on, so minus one half, we'll have a zero here. The other zero was at positive four. So right here. The axis of symmetry that goes through the x coordinate of the vertex, which was at one and three quarters. So I'm just going to draw a vertical line through one and three quarters, which should be roughly here. Okay, so there you have one and three quarters. Just going to modify that line to continue indefinitely in both directions. So this is the line x equals 1.75.
Now the vertex occurs at minus 10.125 as a y value. So let's see if we can estimate that accordingly. So we're going to be running off the graph slightly, but not by much. So let's just land the turning point of our parabola here. That is our vertex. Okay. Now to add some precision to this, we could use a step pattern with an A value of 2. But given the readability of this graph, it might be somewhat difficult. So we're going to freehand the sketch of our parabola. On the right hand side, that doesn't look all too bad. Neither does the left. And we'll label the equation on the graph. Okay, so now that the graph of the quadratic function has been plotted successfully, we can then begin to consider the properties of the reciprocal function in relation to this function and graph it successfully as well.